This week on Facing Fort Worth, find out what new major attraction is under construction. It's the best city in America. And meet two very different kinds of fighters. I am their advocate. It all starts now on the 109 Facing Fort Worth. Hello and welcome to Facing Fort Worth. I'm Sophia Dumani. Today we'll take an in-depth look at some people impacting the Fort Worth community. With general elections coming up this week, our Jacob Smith sat down with two council members to find out more about their campaigns. Jacob? Thanks, Sophia. I'm here today with Councilwoman Ann Zeta of District 9 and Councilman Zim Zimmerman of District 3. Thank you both for being here today. Thanks for having us. Yeah, pleasure. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I want to ask you both, uh, what are your primary issues you would like to focus on uh, in your coming term? We'll start with Ann. Okay. Really concerned about safe neighborhoods, so I'm passionate about trying to find ways to make the streets that are in our neighborhoods safer. Um, people tend to speed in neighborhoods. I hear that often when I go to neighborhood association meetings, so I'm working on some physical changes that we can make to streets that will calm traffic in mm -hmm. those areas where people walk and bike and um, drive cars as well. Um, as well as looking at trying to lower the speed limit in residential neighborhoods. Councilman Zimmerman. I've been working real hard with TxDOT and the RTC to uh, come up with some funding to uh, widen the I-30, I-20, but more importantly to get frontage roads continuous from Weatherford all the way into downtown Fort Worth. Uh, we've had two accidents out in that area in the last six months and each of the accidents shut traffic down in both directions for over four hours with no way to escape. So it's a serious problem. It's going to keep continue to get worse. So that's really I'm going to focus a lot of time on. What makes you uh, the best candidate to represent your district? I've been on the council for eight years. Uh, I pretty much now know who the key people are, not only in, in the city, but in the, in the, uh, in the government, uh, but also in the city itself that uh, I can turn to when I need to get uh, support. What do you think makes you the best representative of your district? You know, I started out just three years ago, and this wasn't anything that I ever anticipated doing ahead of time. It wasn't something that I planned for, but I have a background in city and regional planning. Um, I got my master's degree at UTA, and I worked as a planning consultant, and many of the cities that I worked for were smaller cities throughout the Metroplex. Um, and many of the decisions that we make on council are about development and planning and zoning, and so I think having that foundation is a really good foundation to start with. If uh, you happen to not be reelected, um, what will you miss the most about uh, representing your district? I don't, I think that um, I will continue to serve the community no matter what, you know, my role is. If I have an official role as the representative, as the council member, um, I will continue to work to make Fort Worth a great place to live and work and play. And if I don't, then I will continue to do that in some other way. Councilman? If I don't get reelected, uh, I'm not sure that the world comes to an end at that point in time. Uh, in fact, it might be that I can finally figure out how to go into retirement because I have flunked retirement according to my wife. Uh, and there are, there are things that I'm already active in that I'll continue to be active in. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you both for being here. Until next time, I'm Jacob Smith. Back to you, Sophia. Thanks, Jacob. Don't forget to vote in Fort Worth's general election, May 6. Go to gsit.tarrantcounty.com to find out more about polling locations. Fort Worth has a new major attraction in the works. A new convention center named the Dickies Arena will seat 14,000 people. It will hold concerts, sporting events, family entertainment, the annual stock show, and the rodeo. The arena will be located near the Will Rogers Memorial Center in West Fort Worth. It's scheduled to be up and running by November 2019. It's also expected to host several rounds of the NCAA men's basketball competition in 2022. Check out what Mayor Betsy Price had to say about the new arena. This convention center in Fort Worth, the Will Rogers, and now our fabulous multi-purpose arena really strengthen our reputation as the best city in America to live, to work, to raise a family. Just a mile and a half down the street from the new arena is the Fort Worth Zoo.
USA Today ranked the Fort Worth Zoo the fourth best zoo in the country, making it the only zoo in Texas to place in the top 10. The zoo aids conservation efforts to save endangered species from extinction. Their newest addition is Gus the Baby Gorilla. Gus is a member of the Western Lowland Gorilla family who are in critical danger due to hunting and disease. He's the first gorilla born at the zoo and one of many fun and playful animals to check out. One Fort Worth athlete is anything but playful. Xavier Rodriguez is a high school student who spends most of his time in the ring. He's competing in the National Golden Gloves Boxing Tournament in Louisiana. Our Kaylee Ryan met with Rodriguez to learn why he's fighting and who's rooting for him back home. Get it going. <laughs> Xavier Rodriguez seems like a typical high school senior, playing video games, grabbing a snack, and even showing off in front of his brothers. <laughs> but his daily routine is anything but typical. He's a boxer, and he's training for an upcoming fight. There's really no days off when it comes to this. That means he works out three times a day and eats small meals to stay at 108 pounds. I just need some water and my oatmeal, and that should be good. He began boxing at 11 years old, the first year his mom would let him. Once I saw him fight for the first time, his first ever bout fight round, I knew that's where he belonged. And he always had this mean looking little grin, you know, that no one could mess with him when he was growing up. He didn't win his first fight, but that didn't stop him. No, actually I was not disappointed. I was like, man, that's fun. I want to fight again. <laughs> He did fight again and won. This trophy alone was for uh, winning uh, the ringside nationals. Now he's entering another competition, the National Golden Gloves. This is his time, you know, he's at the perfect age, he's, he's, his weight's good, I mean everything, it's, he's got a good mindset. But he's not just fighting to win a bunch of trophies. On that date is when I told my dad that I was going to change everybody's life. I was going to change my dad's life, he wasn't going to have to work no more. My mom wasn't going to have to work anymore because I was going to be that successful in the sport of boxing. It's pretty crazy when an 11 year old tells you what he wants to do from, for the rest of his life. Fighting to support the family who supported him. <laughs> Kaylee Ryan for the 109. Rodriguez plans to say goodbye to the amateurs and turn professional next year. His parents say they couldn't be more proud. While Rodriguez fights for his title, one brave little girl fights a very different battle. I got to meet with third grader Hallie Barnard and her family, who have now given 26 people a second chance at life. Hallie may have made it her mission to help others, but there's still one life that they're trying to save. As Hallie Barnard and her friends get ready for the big race, she knows she'll be taking a different path. While Hallie can start off running like everybody else, a rare disease called diamond back fan anemia keeps her from finishing. For Hallie, the race for her life is far from over. We found out when she was 13 months old that she was sick and um, we fell apart and we came back together stronger and said we've got to do something. In order for Hallie to survive, she must rely on a complete stranger for a bone marrow transplant. Hallie is one of 14,000 people anxiously waiting for a match, and she's been on the wait list for almost eight years. Less than 2% of the United States are actually registered to the bone marrow registry. Those who are registered have about a 1% chance of being a match to anyone. The, the odds are not good. But Hallie and her family have not given up hope. Elise founded Hallie's Heroes so that her daughter and others alike could find heroes of their own. Heroes who can give them a second chance at life. It started finding her match. It, and it was totally selfish. It was me wanting to save her. And she said, we gotta do more, Mama. Through her sickness, Hallie has spoken to hundreds about the importance of registering to become a donor. Hallie's Heroes has found more than 20 matches for other people with life-threatening diseases. Every match we find, although it's not Hallie's match, we celebrate like it is Hallie's match because it's a huge win for us. I am blessed that I can be here with you today. When I know there are other kids who are too sick and can't play or go outside and have tea parties and we in the hospital, I am their advocate. She's a child that on any given day you would look at 
and be like, wow, she's not sick. She, we need her to help redefine what sickness looks like because people don't see when she gets off the bus and she doesn't feel good and she can't play with her friends. People don't see when she has to take another round of steroids. People don't see when she gets a cold and she misses three weeks of school because it's something totally different for her. To see if you could be Hallie's hero, go to DKMS.org to register to become a donor. Swabbing both cheeks will determine if you are a match. I have a life-threatening disease and I need people to swab so that I can live. Hallie suffers from diamond back fan anemia, a rare disease that keeps her bone marrow from producing red blood cells. Steroids currently keep Hallie alive, but there's no telling when her body will become resistant. Diamond back fan anemia affects about 800 people worldwide. Because it's so rare, there is not a lot of funding. So many parents, like Hallie's, raise money for research on their own. All the proceeds for Hallie's Heroes goes towards finding a cure and helping families pay their medical bills. Hallie's Heroes has swabbed more than 3,000 people in hopes of finding bone marrow donors. Joining me now is one woman who swabbed through Hallie's Heroes and found a match. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. Could you tell me what prompted you to get swabbed? I just went out to the drive, didn't really know much about it, and I swabbed and got a call um, a couple years later. Can you walk me through the process of getting swabbed and getting contacted and then finally donating? The swabbing process was super simple. We um, went to an event where they, you know, talked a little bit, did some paperwork, and it was literally like a 30-second swab on each cheek, and they mailed it off, and you're in the registry. Um, you never know if you're going to get that call, but if you do, it's your chance to save a life, which was pretty amazing. They gave me a call, and I really <clears throat> was kind of caught off guard and didn't know what to expect, but the organization was fantastic about talking me through everything, giving me plenty to read and what to expect and a lot of time to answer, you know, ask questions and, and really get comfortable with the process. And what was the process for actually donating? My recipient was a newborn baby girl, so and usually if the recipient is two or under, you have to actually do the bone marrow donation through the hip bone. Um, everybody else does it through the plasma um, just through the arm like you would a blood donation, but because my recipient was a newborn, I did that. Um, it was a pretty simple, there was nothing really leading up to the process that I had to do. They, they did fly me out and do complete medical checks and tests to make sure that I was a good person to donate and that you know she was, we were a good match for each other. And I did the process. Um, two days later, I was back on a plane home and you know took it easy for a little bit. And it was just really, very simple. I was scared going into it, but it was really simple and, and not, not terrible at all. So you say you just took it easy. What was the actual recovery like? I went in that morning for the procedure. Uh, they fly a companion with you, so my husband went with me. And we went back that afternoon. We stayed in a hotel. I watched a bunch of movies and, you know, did just kind of late, lounged around. Two days later, I was back on a plane. I was carrying my own luggage through D.C. and boarding a plane all on my own and back to work on Monday. I donated on a Wednesday and was back to work on a Monday. Wow. When you think of how easy it was to swab and to go through with the donation, do you think a lot of people know that it's that easy? I think there's a lot of fear. And when they told me it would be through my hip bone, you know, I was initially filled with fear and anxiety and what was this going to be like? I'm not, I don't have a high tolerance for pain, but the more I read about it, you know, through this organization, you learn that it's a temporary pain for a really lifetime change. And that's pretty amazing. It was more fear I had built up about the, you know, the anxiety of what was going to happen. But once I did it, it was, I've had way more pain, you know, get, recovering from a really strong leg day at the gym than I did, you know, through this procedure. It was really surprising. And I think if more people knew really how easy it is and literally saving a life, uh, I think more people would do it. Coming up, a look at the most popular house on the block and at some adorable dogs. It's all next on the 109 Facing Fort Worth. Before doers 
dreamers and trailblazers make their mark on the world, there was TCU. TCU, where dreams take their course. Welcome back to Facing Fort Worth. A house outside of downtown attracts hundreds of people every weekend. What you may notice is the house's color, but what goes on inside is the real story. Colleen Mortel has more. One house is not like the rest in this neighborhood located outside of downtown Fort Worth. Noelle and Sarah Vera Montez bought this house in 2011 and have spent the past five years restoring it, including a major paint job. We think black is like a like the black suit. It never goes out of style. Last June, the two began to open up their unique home to local artists and musicians as an outlet to present their work. We've always wanted to create like a cool uh, platform for people that can't get into like bigger galleries uh, but are still like super talented. The couple and their three children live in the house and hold multiple events almost every weekend that draw in nearly 300 people. I enjoy it the most because it's my home and so I feel a sense of comfort and that's for us is the goal to provide for our guests. That sense of comfort has attracted Fort Worth artists like Gabriel Moore, who showcases art for the first time ever at the Black House. When I came in, it was uh, inviting, it was different, it was real edgy. Um, for someone like me that's never been out to see a lot of photography other than my own, it was something that I really appreciated. <laughs> I have not been in a house, in a space that quite has this level of, of warmth and uh, community support, especially of the arts and creative talent. The Vera Montez family has seen similar locations in New Orleans, Nashville, and Los Angeles. But there's not a place like that in Fort Worth, so we've always wanted to bring that back to our city. Is that we're showing all the different perspectives and different medias and, and really translating how we see the world today but through a Fort Worth lens. The Black House plans to continue expanding in hopes of accommodating between 500 and 1,000 guests. We want a Black House in New Orleans, we want a Black House Austin, LA, um, Dallas. We want it to be big uh, but also have the same like uh, foundation. Like Black House is a location, but it's also like a movement. Like we want to go support people. We want to bring all our friends to support them. Support within the community is what this house is built upon and the message the Vera Montez family promotes. Colleen Mortel, The 109. The Black House is booked throughout May, but available for scheduling in June. If you're interested in making an appointment, email fwblackhouse at gmail.com. There's more than a few talented artists in Fort Worth. One rapper is taking a new approach to music. Rex the Rapper is gaining recognition with his own brand of hip-hop that promotes positive energy and spirituality. Jacob Smith gives us a look inside his world. <clears throat> Yo. Meditation 101. <laughs> Yo. I try to teach. You know? Fort Worth's a cool music town. They like to hear different things, and Rex is very different. He, he's got his own thing. With the music, I just want to make sure we're all relatable or make sure that you can see a common thread between people. And uh, with an emphasis, though, my music does have, like, catered to people who are indigo children in a way, people who feel like there's more than just what we see. There's more behind the scenes. Yeah, I think it's what we need. I think it's what music needs now, man. It's not ego driven. His music is not ego driven, which uh, a lot of hip hop is ego driven. You know, look what I got. Look at my cars. Look at my chains. Now nah, he's he's on another level. That oxygen is life force. If you didn't know it, your thoughts been racing, and I'm giving you a way to slow it. That meditation got me right. I know you see me growing, feel the same in the rain, and if it started snowing. Fourth is definitely a, a country or a rock band type town, but. Uh, it influenced me because it was like back to me relating everybody together. I know everyone is similar in a way, you know, but they were Fort Worth maybe has not gotten there. It's like, yeah, if you hear my music, be like, oh, this random black dude is kind of like me, random 40 year old white dude. And so I think Fort Worth does that. It inspires me to push the boundaries for one and then be able to bring a harmony and unity to the city that is kind of doesn't not here. 
at the time. So. Like, if it goes, that's cool. I'm sure he'd love to be able to only make music. If it doesn't, it doesn't matter because it's not, it's not thirsty. You know how people say thirsty? It ain't, it, the music's not thirsty. It is what it is now. I think eventually people are like, that rap stuff isn't that bad, you know? And not of it, all of it is destruction. Rex said his next album will be released by the end of the year. While Rex sharpens his lyrics, other Fort Worth residents are going out for some old-fashioned fun on the dance floor. Our Shane Battis has more. It's senior prom, and this time, it really is for seniors. MLK Community Center Coordinator Paula Jackson started the dance to reinvigorate people who haven't been to a prom in decades. When I first approached my staff about it, they said, I don't think that idea is going to work, because most seniors probably could care less about attending a prom. They were wrong. The first dance in 2011 had about a dozen attendees. Now, it attracts over 450 seniors looking to fulfill a missed milestone. Uh, what I found out is most of them really have not attended their prom. So this gives them an opportunity to attend their prom with their families and their friends and, and get the opportunity to enjoy it. No one seemed to have as much fun and attention as Eula Harris. She's been looking forward to this special night for years. I'm enjoying the prom. It is magnificent what Miss Jackson is doing. To see friends and loved ones, you know, it's like a checklist. I know some is not here, but it's so good to see the ones that are. It's so enjoyable. King Fred Jones, <laughs> Queen Elizabeth Johnson. I really want them to feel all the effects of being at your senior prom. They love it. They love it. While many of these Fort Worth residents may be retired, their dancing shoes never will. Jackson said the senior prom will return next April. Admission is free for guests above 50 years old. There are approximately 3.9 million dogs living in shelters worldwide. One local animal shelter took a new approach to get their dogs out of the kennels and into a new home. Thank you. The Fort Worth Animal Care and Control Center hosted their first open adoption at the Z-Bones Dog Park. 50 lucky dogs got to play with potential new family members, turning up the cuteness to try and find a home. Sometimes a shelter, they're in a kennel and it's hard for them to really showcase how fun and friendly and playful they are. Um, so here they're able to run around, play with other dogs, play with other people. The first adoption that I saw actually was a dog that had been at the shelter for two years that found a family um, right from the get-go. But for this family who just moved to Fort Worth from Puerto Rico, a new dog is so much more than just a pet. We left basically everything. We came here uh, with our clothes. It's kind of, uh, okay. you know, hope. Hope. Something 37 dogs went back to the shelter without. The Animal Care and Control Center is working to plan more outdoor events so that the nearly 500 dogs they house can live their lives outside of cages and in the care of a loving owner. We don't want to euthanize. That's not what we want to do at any point. Um, so if we can partner with foster organizations and rescue groups and anyone that's willing to either adopt or temporarily care for an animal, that can help us make room for others. The Fort Worth Care and Control Center has a 91% live release rate. If you're interested in adopting or fostering a dog, visit fortworthtexas.gov slash animals slash dogs. Well, that's all the time we have for today. To see more stories about Fort Worth, visit the109.org. The show will return this fall to face Fort Worth. Thanks for watching.